God bless you, family, New Heart Christian Center, and our family abroad, everyone that continues to support our ministry and watch every week. We want to welcome you back to Word on Wednesday. Truly, the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I'm happy to be back before you once again, feeding you in the Word of God. I thank God for the opportunity that Bishop Butts um, has allowed and entrusted in me um, to feed you what God is saying to the church. Let us go into prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your awesomeness, your power. We thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for your love, all that you are to us. God, as we begin to get into your word tonight, we ask that you would open our hearts, open up our minds, open up our understanding, Lord, to receive of you. Move self out the way, Lord, that we may uh, receive of you. And Lord, we just thank you. We just praise you and we give your name all the glory, all the honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We want to go to the book of Ephesians tonight. Amen. We were dealing with um, a series on exposed. Amen. For light had come into the world. But men love darkness. But the light has come to expose us into the way of Christ. Amen. And we're going to move um, from that on tonight. Amen. With another uh, lesson, maybe a series according to what the Lord say. And we want to talk about being a contagious Christian. Amen. Being a contagious Christian. Amen. So we take our text, um, and we're going to play around here tonight, in Ephesians chapter 5. And it says, Be ye therefore followers of, of God as dear children. That is the context of everything. That is the context of um, everything that we're talking about. Be ye therefore followers of God. Of who? Of God. And how are we ought to follow? We ought to follow as dear children. I heard the preacher say, uh, there are no grown folks when it comes to obeying God. We follow him as children. We're always uh, looking to learn. We're always looking to improve. What can I do to be better? What can I do to be better? So I got to follow God. And this is going to teach us how to be contagious. A contagious Christian. I believe it's Ron Isley that, that has a song that says, you're contagious. It's driving me crazy. It's Ron Isley. Uh, what is he saying? That there is something about you. That's contagious. It's something about you that's uh, taking me out of my mind. Because you're contagious. You're not normal. You're not regular. But it's something different. And not only is it different about you, but it affects me. It, it causes me to be different. It causes me to behave a certain way because you're contagious. And, and that is what following God would have us to be contagious Christians until our lives affect others. Until what we do, it shines about as we talk about being exposed and it uh, affects how others live. It affects how they perceive things because we are contagious Christians. 
I dare somebody to shout and say, Lord, help me to be a contagious Christian. Help me to follow you. Help me to follow you. I want to be contagious. I want to make an impact. Being contagious is making a great impact in the lives of others. How many of you know that it's not about us, but it's about glorifying him? So everything we do ought to bring glory to the Father. It ought to bring glory to him. It, it, it ought to not ever bring glory to us. We, we should never get caught up in ourselves. We should never get caught up in how we feel and our emotions about things because they will always lead you in the wrong direction. They will always lead you in the wrong path. But we ought to be contagious and causing great impact for the kingdom because we are followers of God. And so as we, 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 we expound on this verse, be ye followers. Now help me out. What does that mean? Paul said it to the church of Ephesus, to be ye followers. Who he said? You. He wasn't talking to nobody else, but he said, be you followers. Now most of all of us have uh, social media accounts. And we pick folks who we want to follow. You know, some people you can't even be friends with because they have too many friends. But you can follow them. And why would you waste your time following them if you did not want to know about all of the latest updates? all of the latest news feed that they have and all of the upcoming things that's going on in their life. You wouldn't follow them if you didn't care. And so uh, Paul links this tonight, being a follower of God. We ought to be the same way when it comes to following God. We ought to be into all of the latest happenings, all of the updates. We ought to be into what the word is saying right now. What is the word speaking to the church? What is the word speaking to me? We ought to be following him. We ought to be staying tuned into what the spirit is saying to us. Being a follower. Be ye followers of God. There's so much to say on this. Because we cannot be contagious if we first are not a follower. How, how can I be effective? How can I uh, uh, cause a great impact if I'm not a follower? Because I follow that what I believe in. I follow that what I stand for. And I can't be contagious if I don't follow. So I, I got to follow God. If I want to cause impact like him, if I want to be effective in other lives like him, if I want to be contagious, I got to follow God. Can't follow myself. I got to follow him where he leads me. I will follow. And so what, what is it about being a follower? See, a follower is not just someone who hears. See, a lot of us hear. We hear every week. We hear the word. We hear what the Lord say. We hear. We hear when people are talking to us. But are we listening? A follower is more than just a hearer. But a follower is one that does what they have heard. A follower is one that takes the initiative. The one that takes action. It is not good just to hear how to live for God. It's not good just to hear what to do for him. It's not good just to hear it. We hear it. But we got to be a doer of it. A follower of God means taking on his 
likeness. It means being like him, being Christ-like. What is Christians? Why do we call ourselves Christians? We call ourselves Christians because we are Christ-like. We are like him. We are in his image spiritually. We are Christ-like. Hallelujah. We reflect him when we go out. And, and so when we were talking about let your light so shine before men, it's because we reflect him. And so we have to be careful what we do in the sight of others that we don't misrepresent him. Yeah, 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 we don't, me we don't misrepresent him. It, again, it goes to, it, it's not about, if, if it was up to us, We'll be out there. We'll be wild. We'll be doing whatever we want to do if it was up to us. But because it's not up to us and because we reflect him, there are some things that we have to be careful and we got to stray away from so we don't be caught like others. So we don't be confused with the world because we are Christ. We're like, we're Christ-like. We are his image. Hallelujah. We have an inheritance in him. And so that's why we follow so we can be contagious. So now, I want you to go to uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. See, this kind of teaching right here. So we don't talk about this a whole lot anymore. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. And let's see what does save the Lord here. 1, 15 and 16. But as he, let me say that, but as he, which have called you, who called you? He, who? The Lord. But as he, the Lord, called you. That means he invited you into this grace. He invited you into this fellowship. You were invited. You didn't come on your own. You were invited. You were drawn to him. And so, but as he have called you is what? Holy. Ah, come on, help me out tonight. What that mean? But he that call you is holy. What does holy mean? Does holy mean be half saved? What does holy mean? Does holy mean be like the world and still love God? What does that mean? He that call you is what? Holy. It means separated. It means that there's there's this. None like him. He's separated from sin. He's separated from unrighteousness. In him there is no sin. He's holy. So what? If he is holy, what do we ought to be? What, what do he want us to do? He said, and he is holy, so be you holy. My God. And how are we to be holy in all manner of conversation? That conversation word means in all manner of conduct. We got to be holy. We got to be sub. We got to be different. We cannot be like the world. We cannot live habitually in our flesh. Because he said, be holy. We got to separate ourselves from those things. And we've got to get to the point where we've got to stop making excuses for ourselves. See, you can, you can live for God if you want to. You can do. You can, you can live for him if you want. It got to be something that you want to do. He said, be holy. That is something in the sanctification process that he leaves us to do. To separate yourself. From all manner of uncleanness, separate. 
Be ye separated. Be ye holy. Because why? God is holy. And because we are in his likeness, we got to be holy. See, a contagious Christian is a holy Christian. And see, if, if people can't tell you apart from the sinner man, you got to be a contagious. You got to be a holy. You got to be separated. And see, the problem that we are having in the world today and in Christendom is that we spend too much time trying to conform. We spend too much time trying to conform to be and look like the world because we use the scripture about Paul saying when I was in Rome I act like I was in Rome you know we use those scriptures to be them I got to become like them but there's some things you need to stray away from because if you hang out there too long it's going to pull you and so he says to be contagious you got to be holy oh glory to God in all manner of conduct in every area of your life you got to be holy Got to be separated. They preached this stuff when we were coming up. Every Sunday, week after the week, every service, every revival, we'll talk about being holy. Hallelujah. But the saints had a standard. Anything didn't go because we were taught we got to be holy. Hallelujah. We didn't get away with a lot of stuff because we were taught we got to be holy. My God, to be contagious because when you holy, it caused those around you to, to be different. They got to act different. They can't do what they want to do around you because there's something about you. You're contagious. You're holy. You're in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. And not only that, 16 says, it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Be holy. For I am holy. So to be a follower of God is to be holy like him. To be contagious is to be holy. To be a follower means that I am completely devoted to a cause. Oh, my God. I, I'm completely devoted. I, I'm devoted to him. I'm devoted to his cause. See, my life is no longer my own because I now belong to him. Does anyone say that tonight, that my life no longer belongs to me? I am completely devoted to a cause. I'm completely devoted to God. I'm completely devoted to the things of Christ. I don't belong to me anymore. Even when I want to do what I want to do, even when I want to go against his will and go against his word, he has a way of pulling me back. He has a way of drawing me back because I don't belong to me. Hallelujah. I don't belong to me because I'm a follower. I'm devoted to his cause. His cause is that I be like him. If I want to see him one day, I got to start being like him now. You know, we've got to stop telling ourselves uh, when the sweet by and by come. We're going to be like him. No, you got to start that now. You know, the scriptures say be ready, not get ready. Be ready. We're in these bees tonight. Be ready. Be holy. These things we got to be, not to get holy, but to be holy. We got to be devoted to this cause. To be contagious, we got to be devoted to this cause, the cause of pleasing him. That's why we're a follower. My God. Ephesians 5.1, we're a follower. Be ye therefore. Hallelujah. Be ye therefore followers. Hallelujah. As Christians, the writer says that we should be 
what we are now exposed to. If you, we should be, uh huh, what we have been exposed to. Once the light has shined on you, once you have come to the knowledge of the truth, you ought to reflect that which you've been exposed. I've come to the light now. I know better. See, those things I used to do, my God, I don't do no more. What does the song say? The places I used to go, I don't go no more. Hallelujah. My God, the things I used to do, I can't do them. Hallelujah. No more. Because I've been exposed. The light has shined. And because now the light has shined on me, I'm a follower. I'm contagious now. And now because I'm contagious, I got to now bring others. I got to bring others into this fold. Because they got to see how much it has affected me and what he's done in my life. Be a follower. You know, you can't follow something you don't put no time into. You can't follow something you don't put any interest in. When we follow on Facebook, it's because it's things we inter we're interested. We want to know the hottest gossip. We want to know the hottest news, what's going on in folks' lives, because people put all their business out on social media. We want to know. If they're going to tell it, we want to know it. We can't follow something we're not interested in. And so to be a follower of God, we've got to be interested in being like him. We've got to be interested in his word to teach us how to follow and how to be contagious. So it says to be, not to get but to be ye. And it's talking directly to us. Be what you are now enlightened upon, a follower of God. People ought, people ought to know just by seeing what you stand for, who you live for. A follower of God. I'm following him. It's not about folks. It's not about pleasing folks. I'm following God. Hallelujah. And we got to be careful. Because the scripture does not tell us to think about or just to admire God or just to adore God here. These things are all important. But it says this is a call to practical action going beyond our inner life in God. See, it's one thing to have an inner life in him. But it's another thing to express what's going on in the inside and live it on the outside. Did you hear that? It's one thing to have an inner life in him. You know, we think about him. We adore him inside. We do all of those things, but it's another thing that what's going on in the inside, we live it on the outside. That's what the writer's trying to be a follower. That's what he's trying to tell us to do as being a follower, being a contagious Christian. All that's bottled up in the inside, we live it on the outside for all to see, for it to bring complete glory to God. Glory to the Father. Now, we follow God. How do we follow God? How do we be contagious? How do we be How do we follow God? Following God is a self sacrifice. It's a self-sacrifice. No, no, nobody make you follow them. Nobody make you do it. It's something you want to do. It's a self, it's self-giving, self-sacrifice. It's completely letting go self. I just believe if we could ever get self out the way, we can make an impact. 
we can be contagious if we can ever just move self. That's for all of us. From the pulpit, as the bishop say, to the front door. From the pulpit to the front door. It's a self. We got to learn how to let go self. See, what, what does Matthew 16 and 24 say? What does it say? It's something to do with self. It says to what? Deny. Oh, God. Help us tonight. Lord Jesus. It says to deny yourself. Hallelujah. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Whose cross? We all got our own cross to bear. We know Jesus died on the cross, but we have a cross of our own to pick up. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for you. Uh huh. And there's a cross for me. If any man will come after me, what is to come after? Follow. If any man will follow me, let's talk about be ye followers of God. If any man will come after me. See, we don't go before him either. We can't go in front of him. But any man come after me, let him. Who? Him. You. Me. Let him deny himself. That's one of the hardest things to do sometimes is to deny self. Don't come after me. Let him deny. Ooh, what that mean? What does that mean? Deny. That mean just like you deny play the fool when you're on a fast. You got to deny yourself, your emotions, your your way. You got to deny your way if you're gonna follow him. He then he said, now pick up your own cross. Hallelujah. And follow now. But while you're following me, you got a cross. That, that, that means that, uh, that he didn't promise us that every day was going to be sunny. He said, while you're following me, there's a cross to carry. What cross are you carrying? A self-denial. A self-sacrificial cross. Because when you follow him, you live a life <coughs> excuse me, of self-sacrifice. I give of myself. I give myself away so he can. I got to give of myself. I, if I have to come after him. Hallelujah. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. What was he telling us? We got to deny this thing. See, this thing called self get us in trouble. This thing called self have us mad at folk. Have some folks, cousin folks out. This thing called self. It have us not wanting to, to be impactful in the ministry. Because self don't got in the way. And self turns everything and make it about self. And it, it, it removes the glory of God because we made it about us. And so he said, if any man come after me, you, in order to be contagious, you got to pick up a cross. Yeah, 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 be a contagious Christian. In order to be contagious, you got to pick up a cross. We got a cross to carry. We got a cross to bear. Hallelujah. Self-sacrifice. Self, be not conformed to this world, but what? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. But before he said all of that, in Romans 12 and 1, he said, present your bodies 
He begged us. I beseech you, brother. I beseech you. I beg you. I ask you, brethren, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice. Not a dead one. You're a living sacrifice. Every day of your life. That's the, this is the first step to be effective, to be impactful, to be contagious, is that we've got to be a living sacrifice. My God, my God. Hallelujah. So we follow him by our sacrifice. So what does it mean to you tonight to be contagious? The writer says, be ye, you, therefore, hallelujah, therefore, followers, followers of God. We got to realign ourselves. We got to realign our focus back in the right place. We can't follow if our focus is off. We can't follow him if our focus is not aligned on him. We got to put our focus. We got to stop letting folks get us off course. We got to stop allowing the enemy to trick us, to deceive us. Hallelujah. We got to stop allowing those things. And to continue to follow him. And he gives us a way to follow as children. Humble as a child. Mature as an adult. As children. We're all children of the king. The children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we may stumble. Yeah, you may make some mistakes. But we're the children of God. We got to follow after him. We follow in a forward direction. Hallelujah. Not in the backwards. I can't, I can't follow in a backwards direction. I can't follow that. Because I, I can't look back. I can't look back upon, I can't look back on my life. I can't look back on those old things. Those old things are not good for me. I can't look back on those things. But I follow him in a forward direction. Because I got my eyes on the prize. My eyes on the crown. Because I'm a contagious. I'm a contagious Christian. When people see me, they see the likeness of him. My talk ought to be the likeness of him. My walk ought to be the likeness of him. My conduct, glory to God. Hallelujah. You ought to be seasoned with grace. Be ye followers of God. I'm a contagious Christian. I dare you to tell somebody tonight, I am. A contagious Christian. I am a holy Christian. Hallelujah. Holy, separated. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We enjoyed the word of God tonight. We thank you for tuning in once again. Listen, God is good all the time. There's none like him. We thank God for his word and what he continues to do. And I want you to know we're praying for you. Uh, don't forget this week, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you. Glory. In the Lord's, at the Lord's house. God bless you. God keep you. And let heaven smile upon you.